Hello, and welcome to another episode of County Perspective, the show that focuses on Frederick County government, local programs and events, and the community that you live in. I'm your host, Brandon Rosa, and thank you for joining us. Now, a lot of good news has been happening in Frederick County, so let's not waste any time and let's jump right in today's top news stories. Executive Gardner was joined by several community partners to announce the expansion of the New Horizons Academy, a program to support local students who are experiencing homelessness. Started in 2016, the five-week program is coordinated through the Student Homelessness Initiative Partnership, known as SHIP of Frederick County. This year's program will serve 75 Frederick County Public School students from six high schools and for the first time will include rising ninth graders. For five weeks, students will take an academic program that will give them credit towards their graduation. Our goal, and this is based in re national research, we know that if a young person, a teenager, high school uh, student is um, not able to, to complete their secondary education, i.e. Uh, graduate from high school, that they are three and a half times more likely to be homeless as an adult. So this is an attempt uh, as a part of our full year program to help these students be successful in school. The New Horizons Academy has evolved since its debut in 2016. But what remains the same is the fact that the program makes a real difference in the lives of teenagers who are experiencing homeless or housing insecurity. For more information about New Horizons, contact SHIP of Frederick County at 240-415-8971 or via email at info at shipfrederick.com. A 2,100-acre site in Buckystown that used to be home to Alcoa, East Alcoa, is finding new life. Texas-based Quantum Loophole announced they have purchased the site in a partnership with TPG Real Estate Partners. They plan to develop a first-of-its-kind environmentally friendly data center campus. Plans for the site include efficient design for sustainable power and water use, and a nature-first design aesthetic to protect views and reduce visibility from public roadways. County Executive Jan Gardner said the announcement is big news for Frederick County. She is pleased that the former East Alcoa property will once again serve as an employment center with high-paying jobs, and she looks forward to Quantum Loophole sharing their plans with the surrounding community. Based on improved health metrics, Frederick County Executive Jan Garner announced plans to phase in the reopening of Frederick County government buildings. County buildings open to employees on Tuesday, July 6, as they transition back to office work sites. Beginning Monday, August 2nd, divisions may begin to offer access to the public as appropriate, such as by appointment. All county buildings will return to normal operations and be fully open to the public beginning Wednesday, September 1st. Because the virus remains in a community, masks will be required to be worn in all public areas of county buildings and in all meetings or gatherings of employees during the transition period. After September 1st, employees and members of the public who are fully vaccinated against COVID-19 will no longer be required to wear masks. Many Frederick County government facilities are opening their doors again for the public like parks and recreation facilities, and now Frederick County Animal Control. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Frederick County Animal Control was closed to the public and was offering virtual adoptions, but soon they will be opening their doors for visitors to come see the animals face to face. Before coming into the facility, visitors should be aware of the new rules. Take a look. Welcome to the Frederick County Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center. To ensure a safe and enjoyable visit for all, we ask you adhere to the following guidelines. Masks are required to be worn in the facility at all times, covering mouth and nose completely. Visitors should apply hand sanitizer upon entry and after visiting each animal. Sanitizer is available throughout the facility. Visitors should not stick hands and fingers into cages or kennels. Visitors that do not comply with these guidelines will be asked to leave. Each animal's cage is locked. Visitors and shelter staff will open them and allow you to interact 
once you have checked the pet's availability and have read its medical and behavioral profiles. Animal profiles can be accessed by scanning the QR code on each cage with the camera on your smartphone. If you need assistance or do not have a smartphone, staff and volunteers will be on hand to assist you. While applications should be filled out completely prior to your arrival, please notify staff at the front desk if you've decided on a specific animal during your visit. Thank you for visiting Frederick County Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center. Staff and volunteers will be happy to answer any questions you have during your time at our facility. Stay with us. We have plenty more coming up on County Perspective. Welcome back to County Perspective. I'm your host, Brandon Rosa. In just a few moments, we'll take a look at how motorists and pedestrians can share the road safely. But before we do that, let's see who our pet of the week is. Ever wish your cat could stay a kitten forever? Then look no further than Foxy. This beautiful girl's petite features and lively personality will leave you saying she's a year old already? While initially shy, Foxy loves attention, warming up quickly once you begin lavishing her with affection. A bit silly, Foxy instantly starts purring and rolling around so you don't miss any spots during petting sessions. Now comfortable in her environment, Foxy's at the front of her cage, eager to engage with everyone, meowing for attention and reaching out to her feline neighbors. To learn more about Foxy and our virtual adoption process, call Frederick County Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center at 301-600-1546. As the summer months continue, a lot of people will be out taking a jog on the road. So it is very important that while you're operating your vehicle, that you pay close attention to the road and if you see someone jogging on the street, please be careful. This video will show you how motorists and pedestrians can share the road safely. Frederick County has miles of beautiful country roads with outside walls. Many of these roads have low vehicle traffic volumes and many are great places for walking and or running. In cases where there is no sidewalk, these roadways need to be shared by all. In Maryland, state law allows walkers and runners to use these roads within certain guidelines. When a sidewalk is not provided, a pedestrian walking or running should walk on the left shoulder or on the pavement along the left side edge of the roadway, facing any traffic that might approach from the opposite direction. It may be safer to cross the road and travel alongside the opposite side of the road when approaching blind curves or hills. Walk or run with a partner if possible, but when being passed by vehicles from in front or behind, maintain single file. Wear bright colored clothing that can easily be seen by drivers and avoid dark colored clothing, especially at night. Be especially careful when walking or running at dawn or dusk as it's harder for drivers to see you at these times. When walking or running at night, use a flashlight or headlamp to see the road surface in order to avoid any tripping hazard. Also when walking or running at night, wear either clothing with luminescent striping or clothing that incorporates lighting into the material. Drivers also need to do their part by slowing down and giving walkers and runners plenty of room. Be especially cautious around areas with hills and curves. Lastly, respect each other as we are all legally allowed on the road together. Looking for something to do in the next few weeks? Well, Frederick County has plenty of activities to keep you busy. Check out some of the great programs that county departments are offering.
To find more virtual events and programs or for more information, log on to the county's webpage, frederickcountymd.gov. Now at the end of our show, we like to mention a few recent events along with things our viewers should keep an eye out for in the upcoming weeks. Frederick County residents can now join a solar electrical vehicle charging co-op which makes installing a solar or EV charging system easy. Solar co-ops bring neighbors, small businesses, and or nonprofits together, answer questions, and use bulk purchasing power to get discounted pricing and a quality installation. Each participant receives a personalized proposal. Residents and businesses participating will reduce their carbon footprint, save money on their energy bill, and promote the benefits of renewable energy. For more details about the program or to find other virtual info sessions, visit Capital Area Solar Co Op Solar United Neighbors and click on Maryland. FCPL is beginning to open their doors for in person browsing in all Frederick County Library branches. On top of that, FCPL is now fine free. So if you forget to return your book, CD, video game, or FCPL item, you will not be fined. Things happen in our day-to-day -day life and FCPL wants to make sure all customers are happy. Please keep in mind, if your item is overdue for more than 21 days, your account will be blocked from checking out any other items until your item is returned. This is done to make sure an item isn't lost or stolen and if an item is lost, the customer will have to pay the replacement fee. If you would like more information about the fine free policy and more information about FCPL reopening, visit fcpl.org. Well, that's it for this episode of County Perspective, but don't forget to follow Frederick County on social media in order to keep up to date on important news and events. We'll see you next time for a fresh look from a county perspective.